Hello everyone, my name is The Fox. This is Resident Evil 7 being played on the GPD Win 2 at max settings. Once again, we're taking a look at what these custom heat sinks are capable of. This is the aluminum heat sink block. Again, I'm still running with the copper heat sink block on there because that will give us the best performance. This is the stock cooler that comes on this device and was pulled out of this device here. And again, we are using the copper version of this. This is the aluminum one. This one is in there and you can see my review of that. And we're just kind of taking a look at what that's like. Now I was accused of originally when I first pl played this game with the, my prototype GB2 into that someone accused me that this was actually being streamed to the device when um, obviously that's not the case. Um, now I actually own the game. Previously I was doing the demo. Uh, very quickly, let's go ahead and take a look at the options. So if we look at our graphic settings, you can see that I am running at 720. Well, the rendering resolution is 720p, but you can see down here, resolution scaling is at 50% of that. Now, there is some debate. Um, when I had originally said this um, I, oof, a long time ago, basically, there is some debate either if we're doing 50% of the width and the height or 50% of the pixel count. If it's the width and the height, it is 360p. If it is the pixel count, it would be like 507p. Um, we can do some further tests. There's actually some screenshots that I'm going to take and I'm going to try to calculate uh, if you like count the the edges of um, a vertical, a diagonal line, you can actually calculate the actual resolution. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll leave that in the comments section just so that we have some uh, proof of that. You can see that we are running in borders window. Uh, 90 degrees field of vision is the largest that it can be. So this is as large as it can get. Frame rate and PIF variable just so that we can have this fluctuate and again to make sure that we push this device as fast as it can go to make it as hot as it could possibly be. V-Sync is off as well. Um, rendering method I have is interlaced and texture quality and texture filtering are very low. So basically this is lowest settings possible um, for this device, but we're getting very good frame rate. Check my objective. If I could read that. So while we're walking closer to this house, I'll kind of just explain what's going on here. We're running, um, this is the API that's being used. So there are, the engine is actually running in DirectX 11. This is our current frame rate. This is our frame time. This is the average FPS. Um, this line right here, you can see this red line. This will show us our fluctuating. So you can kind of keep an eye keep an eye and this will kind of show as a visual indicator of the type of frame rate that I'm getting on average throughout. So it's going to be a little bit, especially when we start getting into the house, just so you can see what's going on. Um, that is our current SOC temperature. So we're at 67 degrees Celsius, which is very cool for being at our max power. Currently to reach these frequencies, I'm only using 9.7 watt. I am undervolting uh, by 60 millivolt on both the CPU and GPU. That allows us to that allows us to hit those frequencies by spending less energy to get to those frequencies. I just have to go around, I suppose. Is there another way? Yes, there is. Um, and as you can see, when you're in dual core, the most, the biggest frequency that we can get to is 2.4. Oh, run. Is that a toggle? No, it's not. I have to hold it. Accept her gift. Whose gift? Join us. Curious. Uh, so even though the max frequency for the 7Y30 is 2.6 gigahertz, when in dual core con uh, configuration, it actually maxes that at 2.4 gigahertz. You can see that this power level limit one is the only thing I show, even though there are two power level limits. Power level limit one is what it will default to when the turbo max, free, uh, turbo max boost time period ends. So it'll just go back down to 15 watts, which it's already at, which allows us to basically go to full frequency on the GPU and the CPU, that being 2.4 gigahertz on the CPU and 848 megahertz on the GPU. Despite the fact that Intel lists the 7Y30 as having a 900 megahertz clock, um, no one ever reaches that. Why 
Oh, okay. That was weird. Oh, oh I was pressing the wrong button. So is this like block? Can I cure? Okay. Let's go and hurry up into the to the scary mansion. And later on in this video, just before we end it, I will go ahead and try to bump up this rendering resolution because uh, this frame rate is um, really, really good. Capcom engines are always awesome. So this is pretty much like where the um, demo was. Cripes, is that dark? Um, <laughs> you can see my reflection there. Hey guys. Let me go ahead and uh, lower my, my lights down just so that we can see what's actually on the screen. Is that better? That's yeah, better. We can actually see what's going on now. Oh, crap. Oh. Alrighty. Um, I'm going to actually opt to increase the rendering resolution now. And again, the most important thing that we're doing at this point point is actually just um, objectively looking at how well this heatsink mod is working. We're six minutes into this. Obviously, I was playing this game a little bit beforehand, so I was actually rendering this for uh, about mm, 18 minutes now, and the most that we've got to is 68 degrees Celsius, which is quite cool indeed. Uh, let's bump this up to 0.70. How's that look? Yeah, things look much better. Things look a little bit more crisp. My resolution is still good. Let's see what happens when the cinematic frame rate. Let's go. So right now we are at full 720p. Oh yeah, things look much better, but they're obviously a little bit slower. So we're just at 720p and low settings. And again, this is not streaming, this is running on the device natively. Again, as I've said previously, uh, left, up, down, right. <laughs> that won't cut it, yeah. This is a freaky house. Can I like zoom into it? <laughs> Alright. I'm gonna need something to kind of jimmy that open. Scary stuff. The curious thing is, I wonder why, um, because the Switch has a really good GPU, and I have to wonder why Capcom elected to only have a streaming, a cloud version of RE7 for the Switch. It seems like the GPU should be more than capable, but perhaps the CPU is what is lagging really bad on the uh, Switch side, because it is a, uh, a low, a kind of poor arm and it's underclocked at that when in portable mode. So it's not going to be nearly as performant as 7Y30 CPU is. I have, I'm a vampire. What's kind of upsetting is when you notice how good this game looks. What's going on here? And how well the game is running. Okay, I need to find the power dealy. <laughs> yep, can't do that. Looks like the owners. 
I don't know, when I see games that look really good, and then there are games that don't look nearly as good and have worse performance, it actually uh, grounds my gears a little bit. Anyway, full 720p, just at low settings, but still, I say open. Do, do, do. <laughs> What's that? Oh, I'm at the 11 minute mark. That's usually, that's usually my sign. Anywho. This is Resident Evil 7 running on the GBD Win 2 at max power. Do we have any of the stuff up here? That's that videotape. Cool. Um, all right, guys. So you can see this is at the 11 minute mark. It's around 25 minutes that I've been running this game prior to recording. And you can see that we're only at 68 degrees Celsius. This heatsink mod is really dope, guys. Uh, again, I'll have the link for it in the description field if you're looking to pick it up. Thanks again so much. Thank you for your time. And thank you for watching.